Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the lesson number 54 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. This is going to be a quick episode because it's going to be actually a quick bug fix episode because recently while I was using the backend of the sunset theme, I noticed that a couple of options that I previously coded and they were previously working are not working anymore. And I'm referring to the remove picture or replace picture of our custom sunset sidebar option. So everything's working here. We still have the uh, image and if we try to save the form with all our custom options, uh, the saving options of the default one of WordPress is working. The only thing that is not working uh, it's the uh, ability to call the media uploader, the built-in media uploader, and use it to remove the image or replace the image. So if I click on remove or I click on replace, nothing is happening. So I already understood, I already figured out what was the problem, but before just doing a quick fix, and it's, it's a super easy quick fix, I want to show you what is the process to adopt, to do what you should do when you encounter these type of issues, because these type of issues are pretty normal while you're coding an application. So this is my process on how to debug a section that doesn't work. So first of all, I thought immediately that it was a WordPress related issues because I recently upgraded this installation to WordPress 4.6.1. So I thought maybe they changed the uh, backend or they changed the source code to call the media uploader. So first, if a default built-in option of WordPress or another application application doesn't work, check if that option, if that functionality works on a default on a regular page. So the first thing that I did, I access the post and I access one generic post and I click on the media uploader. So the media uploader works. So it means that the option is not broken in WordPress, but it's just broken on my custom page. So let's go in back on the custom page. The second thing that I check usually, if this is a JavaScript trigger functionality, I always open my console, my inspector, and I click and I select the console tab because the console tab, it's gonna list all the triggers, options, and error that I'm having or I will have eventually in my JavaScript file. So if something is broken, something shouldn't happen, but nothing is happening. We have the security errors and warning checked, so we should see something, but nothing is happening. So I'm not triggering any JavaScript error. So the other thing that I do usually is let's check what these buttons do and let's go on the actual JavaScript function that handles these buttons and let's create some console log to debug this thing. So first of all, let's inspect this element and see these, we have an ID of remove picture and that's it pretty much. So probably my application is using this ID, remove picture to trigger whatever thing it's happening. So let's copy this ID. Let's access our code editor that in my case is panic coda. And let's access the JS and it's something related to the admin. So I'm gonna open my sunset admin.js and I'm gonna search for my remove picture. And that's it. So I have this JavaScript function, remove picture on ID on click. I'm preventing the default. So whatever is going to happen to the button is not going to trigger anything. And then I'm going to trigger a confirm. Are you sure you want to remove this profile picture? So nothing of these things is happening. But the thing that I could do is before all of this, I want to just trigger a console log and then just a message that it says remove clicked. So doing this by doing this or as like a safety precaution wiki, we could comment it out the rest of the code. Now, 
every time we click on this remove picture ID button, we should get a console log remove clicked that it's triggering automatically. So let's save this file. Let's go back on our backend. Let's refresh and let's access again the console because all the console log stuff are gonna be locked inside the console. So let's click remove and nothing, nothing is happening. I have my login activated. So every time I have a log something should trigger some something. So this is a big flag. So this is another step. I figured that this code has not been triggered at all by my button. So the next step is, do I really have that JavaScript in queued, like linked inside this page? So let's do this. View the page source and do a research for the name of the file. Then in my case is sunset.admin.js. So let's go here and search for sunset.admin.js. And as you notice at the bottom bar here, nothing is happening. My source code doesn't have the JavaScript with sunset.admin.js. There's nothing in queued here. So that means that my backend doesn't have the JavaScript file necessary that I customly created to trigger this option. So I'm on the right track and I'm, I'm on the right path. Now I know that something is happening inside my enqueue file and it's preventing my script to enqueue the sunset.admin.js. So let's access that file in our code editor. Let's access the ink folder and the file enqueue.php. And here let's scroll to the function, the sunset load admin scripts. That is the function that triggers the enqueuing of a custom script inside the admin section. And if we scroll back down, we're gonna notice a PHP code that it's not the best. <laughs> and here I found out the issue. So basically this code, it's broken and it was working before. Now it's not working anymore because I'm using too many if statement and else if statement that I shouldn't really use. It was working before because before I was working on my local environment with PHP 5 installed, but since I upgraded to PHP 7, all these else statement now are acting slightly different. And this is totally my mistake. This is a bad PHP code. It's something that I coded without actually thinking of what I was doing. So the solution here, it's pretty simple. Let's analyze the logic. So we have three level pages. We have top level page, sunset page, and the sunset theme and the sunset theme content. We have the main page and the theme and the theme content. I'm checking if in this array, the hook that gets triggered every time we access an admin page, it's present in this array. And if it's present, I'm enqueuing the sunset admin style and the railway admin style. And I can see that this is working because in my backend, I'm using the railway custom font and all this stuff, I have this font style, it's working. Just as a check, if I simply, remove the enqueue of this style and I refresh this page, you're gonna notice we don't have any more our custom style. So this is actually working and it's good. The thing that is not working is the enqueue sunset admin script. I'm using an else if. That means that if the top level alicat sunset page, so the first main page that is this one, it's present is the one that we're looking at. The script should enqueue the media, enqueue script default of WordPress, and the enqueue script sunset admin script, that it's our custom JavaScript. This should work, but actually it's not working because we have this else if. So the else if basically is triggering only one of these solutions. So if something in this array trigger this, Otherwise, if something is in this array or something or this hook is equal to this page, trigger this. But these two if statements, if and else if, cannot be triggered together. And this is what PHP 7 is doing. It's returning true the first if statement, so it's stopping 
the execution of the other else. And this is good because that's how it's supposed to be. So let's clean up this code. First, let's insert. Uh, if you notice here, I have also another else uh, else if where I check if I'm on the sunset CSS page, the page where I give the user the ability to create custom CSS and I'm in queuing again the same file. So let's fix this first. Let's add this page inside the array of available pages. So let's put a comma, let's paste this page here. And now we can remove this because we don't need to in queue again the same thing. The array is going to check for also this page inside the pages array. So it's going to return this too. Now I have to simply remove the else statement because these two things they cannot exclude each other. So if the page is in an array or the page that I'm looking is inside this array, in queue the admin script and the admin CSS. Also, if this page is the one that I'm looking, in queue the media query and the custom script. And also if this page is what I'm looking at. In queue also the A's unique script that I need to uh, customize the uh, CSS area. And also in this case, we have to remove the else statement because I don't want these two pages to exclude each other. I could be on a page, this one, and want to in queue this stuff so I can replace the code and the else statement is not really worth it. Also here we have the last else return nothing. So let's stop the execution of the script that this is actually really useless because if all these if statements are false or are not true, nothing is going to happen. And this action connected to my function is not going to return anything. So it's not a safety precaution or it's not a something that we should actually care to return just nothing because it's not necessary. It's not how WordPress works or PHP needs to return something 100% absolutely in every function. So if we save now this code and we access back our backend and we click refresh, if we click remove, now we have the remove click console log that I created before. So now we know that this is working. And if we click replace profile picture, we're going to trigger the uh, media uploader of WordPress. And this is great. So now we can go back in our sunset admin.js and revert back our script. So now if we go back, we refresh, click remove, we should have the alert, the JavaScript alert that says, are you sure you want to remove profile picture? And this is great. So that was pretty much it. It's a super quick lesson to show you how to debug something that doesn't work and what I did to find out the issue and how this code now it's working with the new version of PHP that I currently installed in my machine. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, happy coding.